What's up guys, welcome back to another Photos Code video. In this video, we are taking a look into Valleybot, which is relatively new library in terms of data validation. Valleybot main plus point is its tiny size library made possible with code splitting. In contrast to Jod, a popular schema validation library which has become not a good choice now. Let's take a look into comparison chart with other libraries. Meanwhile, if you want to see highlight, highlights of this particular library you can see we have 300 bytes which is a bundle size which is the major plus point and let's go to the comparison inside of uh, valleybot documentation which is still in progress and down there we can see the comparison with jod which imports object and string method from jod which evaluates to 11.51 kb but same thing which is imported in from Valleyport, which evaluates to 0 0.74 KB. Well, uh, if you're using JOD uh, in your client side bundle, then uh, you probably need to switch. Uh, but if you're using it in the server, um, it's probably fine. But um, Valleyport is a great alternative and it's really performant. And you can see the zip size is 5 KB. So let's go to our uh, Next.js official documentation. Let's copy the installation, um, creating a next app command, and we will hit towards the terminal and hit in paste. I'm Ishan. In this channel, we discuss and learn new skills around the topics of design and development. If you want to grow your skills and learn new things that are coming up, please subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to smash the like button for me. This really helps me to create more content. Let's get started. We will start with the project name. Let's call it Next.js uh, Valley Bot Validation. Let's hit enter. For now, we will not be using TypeScript, um, but definitely in production. Uh, yes to ESLint and Tailwind CSS. Probably we are not sticking with any styles now. Uh, just hit a API endpoint and we will try Valley Bot. We definitely want to use the SRC directory and app router, yes to app router, and we don't want to customize defaults. After that's done, let's open it up inside of our code editor. Now we are inside of our uh, project and inside here, let's hit in command npm run dev and our app is running. So um, let's go to our folders and we can see we have SRC and an app directory. And inside there we have a page.js and inside there we have some styles which is great. Uh, we want to use Valleybot inside of our API endpoints. For example, uh, we, we will create a new folder and call it utils. And inside this utils we will create a new file uh, which is index.js and in that, inside that index.js we want to uh, make the use of Valleybot. Uh, so we will uh, take in some user input from the user, which would be name, email, and phone. So uh, first of all, uh, let's um, export a constant from here. Uh, we will call this constant summation schema, and this is um, an object. So we are using Valleypot to uh, validate our data. And inside this object, we can pass in a couple of uh, properties. For example, we have a name, and this is a string which will print out uh, your name must be a string and we will probably also need to um, import object from valleybot looks like we haven't installed valleybot yet so npmi valleybot and we will again run npm run dev and inside there uh, we can uh, use this particular thing which is object and hit in control and space and also import string from valleybot and after passing in string here we can also pass in a couple of other properties inside here uh, as an array so uh, minimum length so uh, this would be a second argument and minimum length takes in one as a minimum length value and if it's not minimum length of one and we will throw in an error which says please enter your name and we probably also need to import min length from valleybot and also add a comma and we will also define max length which will also be important for valleybot and the first argument is the max length and the second is the error message so you your name must have three characters or more 
and let's also add a couple of other properties for example we can uh, use email which is a string and this should be email and this should be a string and inside here we can pass in your email must be a string and also we can add a couple of other validation like min length probably we can copy min length and max length and also let's add in email and if that's not an email we will throw in the email address is badly formatted and probably we need to import this email as well um, and after that's done let's go ahead and add one last other property because we are just trying to start off with Valleybot and experiment things out with Valleybot and let's also import number from Valleybot and your phone must be a number so um, and these are a couple of validations that we added with Valleybot now we can use this particular validation that we created for name email and phone um, inside of our API endpoint so we can go to app and create a new folder and call it API and inside that API let's go ahead and create another folder and just for now call it home uh, I mean form form and inside that particular form let's name a file and call it route.js now inside this route uh, we can make the use of um, the exported constant we defined which uh, comes from utils and index which is called schema uh, so let's go to here now we will import next response from next server and also let's import the submission schema and this is called index probably and ultimately let's export a sync function and this particular endpoint is a post request so we can write export async function and this is a post which takes in request and inside here we can add a try block and in that try block we can destructure email name and phone and we will await request dot json and also let's define a catch block which takes in error and inside that particular catch block we will return next response dot json and we have error which is error dot message and let's also throw in the status of 500 and we have a typo here and uh, that looks good now let's go ahead and import this submission schema and let's go ahead and parse this and for parsing uh, we could uh, now pass in the email name and phone here and after that's done we can further uh, query our database in this line and also ultimately return uh, the next response as a validation is working if it reaches this particular line now we can head on to our testing our api endpoint and at this time we have a post request which points to localhost port 3000 uh, slash api slash form and if we hit send we can see the error message your name must have three characters or more so um, probably I made a typo mistake there let's go to here and the max length is must not have so we are trying this out max length you must not ha uh, have uh, two characters or more for now uh, we will stick with two characters and email is just two characters so that sounds weird so let's change this to like um, 10 or 15 for now and uh, hit on save let's go here and let's hit on send uh, must not have three characters so let's add two characters and send email address is badly formatted okay so um, let's write it down and uh, unexpected token uh, JSON as portion 69 so we this should be here and your email uh, must not have three characters or more so email uh, must not have three characters so minimum length maximum length um, uh, must not have 15 characters or more and let's hit save 
it looks like we have 15 characters so let's increase this to 40 for now let's hit save and let's go here and let's hit on send and let's change this to number and let's hit on send uh, must be a number so let's remove these probably I forgot to save this file so let's go ahead and save it again and if we take a look at sending request now we can see validation is working which means that our submission schema validation is pretty much working as expected so we have just scratched our surface with valleybot so in this video we learned about uh, some basics of valleybot and i hope you learned something new from this if you want to learn more around the topics of design and development please subscribe for more videos just like this don't forget to smash the like button for me this really helps me to create more content thanks a lot guys see you in the next one